by Deputy Social Development Minister Henrietta Bohopane Zulu and the Chief Director of Persons with Disabilities in the Justice Department, Dr. Pravina Sukraj Eli, joins us in our Pretoria studio. Thanks both so much for your time. Perhaps, Minister, I'll start with you and the Children's Amendment Bill. Government is saying that bill will further improve children's rights, but it's been lambasted by NGOs, saying it lacks transparency and kills the spirit of cooperation between NGOs and the like and government. Wow. I, I really think sometimes when we criticize bills, we forget that a bill amends an existing principal act. So it's not possible that the bill can completely go off the rails. It's not possible. So I'm not sure which NGOs are complaining, but I think they are complaining uh, beforehand because it's a bill, it's going to be in parliament and there will be public hearings, and whatever it is that NGOs are unhappy about, they'll have an opportunity to raise. So we amend in the Principal Act to improve services to children, mm -hmm. not to take away what is already there, but administ it's an administrative amendment. It's technical amendment. It has nothing to do with the actual content. We'll go into the bill a little bit more later. I'd like to bring in our second guest who's standing by in Pretoria, Dr. Pravina. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News tonight. I'd like to ask you to perhaps begin uh, by sharing your story and then giving us an oversight of how legislation in South Africa is trying to protect specifically children with disabilities. Um, thank you for having me. I just want to say that we are working very hard and we currently have various acts r ranging from the children's act and then the whole the act that is holistic is the is perpuda that actually ensures that persons with disabilities and children with disabilities are ensured reasonable accommodation and are pr protected from unfair discrimination in the country what we trying to do currently is we want to try and bring about regulations under perpuda so that we could have a code of practice that would ensure that when persons with disabilities, especially victims with disabilities, come to court, that they are able to apply for reasonable accommodations so that they actually are not exposed to secondary victimization and secondary, secondary traumatization when they come to access our courts and the justice system. Mm -hmm. We're hearing about the legislation, Minister, and, and the frameworks that are there to try and ensure that people have adequate rights. There's a sense that the legislation is not the problem. It's the implementation and social workers in South Africa being very overwhelmed. And one of the examples um, is the foster care grant issue as an example of how South Africa has the right legislation, but not quite the right um, capacity to fulfill the legislation. That is exactly why we are amending the Children's Act. When I said administratively, the current foster care system requires a child to appear before the court, which has a bad lock, and the child can't appear before, appear before the Children's Court without a social work report. We are unblocking that system, and we are saying a lot of South Africans take in children. Half the time, they cannot afford to look after them, but they take them in. Therefore, children, uh, the foster care system must be unblocked. So the children don't have to go to court, don't require a court order. Because for us to pay a social grant, for an example, a foster care grant, we are not going to pay it unless you have a, a court order. And that court order must be renewed every two years. We are removing that. That is why I'm a bit surprised that which NGO that provides services to children would not want that administrative blockage unblocked. Mm. Yes, we don't have. We have the capacity. We have... Uh, 8,000 unemployed social workers. As a department, we need to unblock that. But at the moment, it's true. Our social workers are overwhelmed. We have a lot of them that are unemployed. We need to work the system. And what cabinet said to us was, make sure that you bring the white paper on welfare services so that it's properly costed and we are able to make sure that for example, the Children's Act requires 65,000 social workers. As a country, we need to be able to do that. So all of what the amendments of the bill we are talking about, 
It's precisely to look at the areas where there are blockages because we're still unblocking and ensuring that social workers get employed so that in the meantime we don't compromise the protection of children. Mm -hmm. Doctor, we're hearing from Minister Angie Mutsaha that there's at least 500,000 children with disabilities who don't have access to schooling. How, I how is legislation going to be able to stop what seems like a massive crisis like that? This is clearly a, a huge problem in South Africa, and it's actually a, a, a huge problem in, in Africa and throughout the world as well. For children with disabilities, uh, actually being included in schools is, is now proving to be a nightmare. There's no textbooks for children with visual impairments, there's no sign language interpreters for children who are deaf, there's no access for in, in other school environments. And although we're trying to promote inclusive education, uh, clearly uh, we are failing in that schools are not able or not willing to take children in with disabilities and then accommodate them and provide them with a quality, equitable education. Now, currently we've got the Schools Act, we've got Popuda, etc. And as you've just said earlier, it is implementation that is proving to be the biggest problem. And it's actually a change in the entire attitudes of, of our Department of Education in the sense that we need to ensure that our teachers and our frontline staff are sensitized to the needs of children with disabilities. And that's the only way we're going to be able to change from if we ensure that our communities and our and our t our educators our children etc actually become more accepting because our legislation is there that that is currently not the problem it's the implementation the policy the practices that need to be put into pl in place to ensure that our children are accepted in every sense of the word and included in every sense of the word in mainstream community schools Minister, uh, let's go back to this issue of social workers. You've spoken about the number of unemployed social workers mm -hmm. who need to be brought into the system to allow for that bill to also work mm -hmm. properly. We're currently reading, I think, an NGO called Door of Hope that uh, social workers have a caseload of between 100 and 300 people each. So how long before this load can be reduced if those unemployed social workers are integrated into the system? I think we must first separate issues. NGOs employ social workers. So it would become a mistake to actually um, measure a caseload of a social worker based on an NGO because the caseload of social workers are different. And 100 plus, it's not necessarily the accurate number. And that is part of what the battle has been about, is that we need to get the ones in the system to work maximally, and part of their challenges has been the basic tools of the trade. So, uh, social workers in NPOs have a different caseload as social workers in government. But what are, when are we working the system? The first thing that we did is to make sure that we cut the scholarship of social workers by 50%. We took the 50% of the scholarship and created new vacancies and uh, so that provinces can absorb social workers as part of the step, uh, uh, you know, like the first step, because it is a real concern, the issue of unemployed social workers. And the fact that a lot of them have studied on social development bursaries, but also a lot of them have gone with Gogo's pension to school. So that issue of social workers is an agent matter and it affects the services to children, by the way. As we talk child protection uh, week, as we talk services to children, children cannot get, whether disabled, not disabled, they can't get services proper without social workers. If you have to assess a disabled child and determine that child's uh, abilities, whether they are able to be included, whether they need a home-based program, whether they need to be classified to a particular school, in the team that you require is a social worker. In that team that needs to determine 
Is this child blind enough to go to a school for the blind? Is this child having autism? Where do you actually, because each child must be classified. And let mm -hmm. me say that disabled children that Minister Mutsaka is talking about, the Schools Act says a disabled child needs, if they are out of school, the MEC and the HOD need to exempt the child. And they must have a program of what must happen to the child. And the Department of Basic Education has not done that. And that is part of what, why we are sitting with a crisis of children with disabilities whose basic right to education is violated. Doctor, very briefly, you've identified where there's strengths with legislation. Talk us through where there's gaps and what needs to be closed in order to make sure that children with disabilities perhaps are not as vulnerable as they currently are. Okay, currently we have a, a huge problem with our law of evidence in the sense that when it comes to the gathering of evidence, when it comes to uh, presenting of that evidence, in court and then when it comes to attaching probative value weight to that evidence by the judicial officer that is clearly currently a gap that we have i mean just to give you an example we still have identity parades for a victim of rape to identify their perpetrator unfortunately a totally blind or a severely partially sighted person will not be able to visually identify a perpetrator and similarly a child a child victim a child victim will not be able to do such a thing similarly we have uh, the, uh, another gap where you don't have part particular skills and we also need to consider that we have children with disabilities are not a homogenous group of, of children. Mm. Their needs vary. Uh, their, the degree of disabilities vary from moderate to mild to severe. Mm. Some children have um, uh, multiple disabilities. Mm. And therefore, we need different skill sets to be able to provide the different reasonable accommodations in, in, uh, for each, for each uh, a child with a disability depending on that particular circumstances. When they come to court, if they need a, a private testifying room, if they need an intermediary, etc. The problem is currently we don't have the process and the, the best practice model, the code of practice that needs to be followed when somebody who comes to court, they, must, they need to know where to go, what what process needs to be followed they need the pro our prosecutors our judiciary our clerks etc need to know what to do if somebody requires a sign language interpreter if somebody requires an intermediary uh, where, where it becomes a bit complicated uh, and and somebody requires uh, uh, for example alternative augmentative communication all of these things need to be built in and unfortunately it can only build in once we have this code of practice and regulations that help to guide and also further judicial precedents that are created because without judicial precedent we won't we don't have any sort of reliance um, uh, to to be able to proceed we need some we need catalyst cases in place so that in future, ch children with disabilities and the rights of children with disabilities can be protected using our courts. Thanks both so much for your time. That was Deputy Minister of Social Development Henrietta Bohopane Zulu in our Johannesburg studio and Chief Director of Persons with Disabilities in the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, Dr. Pravina Sukraj Eli in our Pretoria studios. Stephen, it's over to you.